want everybody to know that to get ready because this Saturday is going to be it's going to be a fun one. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to MLR Mic Check. I'm Danny Wexelman here with New England's Justin Johnson. Dude, how are you? Welcome to the show. I'm happy to be here. I'm doing pretty good. You know, lovely day outside. Starting to warm up in Boston, so nothing too crazy. We love the warm weather, especially up here in the Northeast. I'm based in Manhattan and it is getting hot, man. It's heating up and I'm so excited to kind of catch up with you, learn a little bit more about you. And with the sixth overall pick, Justin Johnson is heading to New England. Dan, this is one of your favorites in the draft. Why? Well, Mags, Josh Smith, you've got yourself an absolute winner here. Not only a great rugby player, but a great human being. I spoke to his head coach, Colton Carriaga, down at Life University. 93% of the time he touches the ball, he gets over the game line. That tells me we've got an aggressive, dynamic ball runner, a guy who can spot opportunities and exploit them. Last summer, the 2020 MLR Collegiate Draft, the first ever, you're picked sixth overall by the Free Jacks. Coming from Life University, you won two national championships there. What was your draft experience like? It was an exceptional experience. When I first found out about the draft, I didn't think it was actually true. A lot of people were telling me about it. I was like, that's that's not true. It's just the MLR. Like, we're small. COVID just happened. And then I saw the actual flyer from MLR, and I was like, okay, this is the actual thing. So I gathered up all my film. I filled it in, and I was I was nervous because no one hit me up for the first however long since I submitted the film. And finally, I started getting contacted by different teams and different coaches. And it was just an exciting experience getting to talk to coaches. I mean, just getting to live the whole draft experience. Because, I mean, you hear about it for basketball, football, hockey. It doesn't matter what it is. So now that rugby actually had it, it was just a great experience overall. And it was, I mean, I think that was the main thing to lead me into professional rugby. Because now it's like, okay, I'm getting drafted. That's a professional environment. So it just kept building up to it. I love hearing that. And I think that everyone's story is so unique and so special. I could imagine that your stomach was outside your body during that process and that period. So, and, and it worked out, it worked out really well for you, dude, you were so athletic in high school. You still are today, but you played football track, you played volleyball, and you didn't start playing rugby until your sophomore year of high school. You said it wasn't love at first sight. So when did you fall in love with the sport? I did not want to go out to the rugby foot at all. I I, ha I was having problems in football with concussions and shoulders and this and that. I was like, what? I'm not about to go out here and put my body on the line with no pads, no helmet. And then I went and just touched the rugby ball and started playing some touch rugby. And I fell in love with it right away. I told everybody, I was like, I love this sport. I love it. I want to learn it and I want to continue playing it. Who are some of those people that influenced you or kind of helped shape your path and guided you to love the sport so much? Um, well, Maricosta Rugby was founded by Duke Dogarian. He was my high school linebacker coach, and then he made a rugby team my sophomore year. And it was him, Allison Taylor. She's, she was my other coach from Maricosta High School. And the Tavais, Jelani Tavai, he's playing in for the Detroit Lions right now. Justice Tavai is out of Hawaii. And Jonah Tavai is in San Diego right now. They were the ones that actually taught me how to play the game and actually helped me become who I am today. An incredible list of people. As you're learning the sport, you're getting used to it. What are some of the stark differences between football and rugby? Well, to be honest, I played linebacker for football, so there really is no difference, especially as a flanker. You're coming off the line, you're trying to make tackles, you're coming up hard. I mean, you're just an aggressive. The only difference is that you're carrying the ball now, which a lot of people like, especially even linemen. When you bring a lineman and say, all right, we're going to turn you into a prop. Oh, but you can run with the ball. They're like, oh, we can run with the ball. Okay. And then that's how you like it. We've actually turned a lot of football players into rugby players. All right. So your first season in the league, you're battling for a starting spot. You're excelling. What do you feel like you have to prove this season? Coming out of it, I knew I was going to be drafted and um, I didn't know where I was going to go. Then the free Jacks picked me up and I already saw the lineup that they were having. They have, I mean, we have tremendous players beyond our eight man, Joe Donston, our seven. So I knew I didn't, I never thought I was going to start off the, right off the way. And that's just, I was blessed enough to start and I've been starting every game. And it's just an opportunity that I try to take as much as possible. And we have good coaching from coach James Willicks and um, Ryan Martin, and then even TK running everything behind us. So we just have a good program and a good set of players that put me in the right positions and actually gave me the chance to start. 
but it is, it's a lot of stress, especially from the beginning. It's different from college. There's a lot of nitpicky stuff. I mean, you're a professional now, you should be able to do it professionally. And I kind of understood that from the get go. And that's kind of what I've been harping on and focusing on is all the small stuff to get the big details. So since joining the Free Jacks, give me some inside details on what life looks like, what practices look like. How has life changed for Justin Johnson? To be honest, coming from Life University, we practice in a semi-professional setting. So it was an easy transition, especially to the Free Jacks. We wake up in the morning, we go to a team meeting, we hit a lift, we go eat lunch, and then we go to practice, and then your, your day is done. That was basically at Life. At Life, we would wake up in the morning, go hit a lift at 6 a.m., um, have classes from 8 a.m. till about 3, hit a practice, and then go home. So it's pretty much the same thing, except here, I mean, I have to just get used to the cold. That's for one, because being from California and then Atlanta, it does not get you ready for the snow. That's one thing, but it's, it's definitely helped me combine into it. And it's been an easy, easy going process for me, especially coach Ryan Mark likes to keep it nice, lean, loose, but focused. So he just likes to change things up. Doesn't like it to get too old, too repetitive. And he's been doing a great job at it. Two national championships at life. How do you take a champion mentality and apply it to professional rugby? Trying to work hard every every day, try to get better, try to work with teams. I mean, I'm working with Mitch Wilson. I've two of those national championships I played with them. So I and I bring it up to him a lot. I'm like, hey, we have two. We gotta we gotta get another one now. Like, let's go. And a lot of these people have the same mentality. Like a lot of the guys are like, all right, I mean, Billy, Billy's won an MLR championship before. He knows the mentality. So it's, it's just that it's just everybody getting on one brain about what we need to do, what we need to execute in order to get to that final goal. Who's the guy on the team that when you were drafted and as you were starting to make your way to new England, be a part of this club, who was the guy who reached out or, or a couple of guys to kind of extend their hand, say, hello, welcome to the team. Well, there was a lot of guys that did it. The team was very welcoming. Even the new England family was welcoming. I had People, even fans messaging me, oh, welcome. If you need anything, let us know. So it was a lot. Um, Mitch was the first one to contact me. Uh, he contacted me before I was drafted. And then he contacted me after, like, if you need anything. Um, Kinder, Connor Kinder, he's kind of injured right now. He reached out to me. Evan reached out to me. Evan Geist, my other flanker. Really just a lot. Even all the coaching staff. Um, Alex McElby reached out to me, the CEO. I mean, even just little stuff like that. A lot of people reached out. They really make you feel at home. And that's what I love about it. The Free Jacks have such a large impact in the community, the New England community. And from your perspective, why does that maybe a difference maker with this team compared to other teams? Because I have just seen what they've been able to do. And even during the pandemic, really making strides and showing the community we're here, we're here to stay. I know they didn't have a home game during that 2020 season, the first opportunity to have a home match. And now here we are a year later, still making such a large footprint in the community. How has that impacted your experience there? Oh, we have tremendous fans. I mean, I've never, to be honest, I've never walked onto a field and seen somebody riding a horse onto the field. That's number one. I've never known a fan named Spider to be dressed out in New England gear, looking like basically a revolutionist, just come out chasing after people. It's just, it's tremendous. The, the fan base is amazing and they really make you feel at home. And that's why we do so good at home. And we haven't had a lot of home games this season, but now we have a whole stretch of home games and we're all ready for it. Our fans are ready for it and we're ready to get this puppy back on the road. All right, Memorial Day weekend and you all will be sporting military appreciation kits. I know you have a tie to the military. So how special is this opportunity to wear that military kit and honor our nation's service members this weekend? Um, it's, it's such a tremendous blessing. Uh, my grandpa served in the military, so... He's, I think he did almost 10 to 15 years in the military um, when he was younger. And unfortunately, he's passed away now. So it's uh, a huge blessing to be able to do it and to be able to represent him and all the men and women that served for our military and uh, lost their lives for our military for us to be able to play this wonderful game and to live in a great country. I am very much looking forward to seeing these custom kits. I know that the league has put a lot of pride in the kits, so I'm excited to see that. And obviously so grateful for your grandpa's service. I have family members as well who served, so always extremely grateful for that, especially this weekend. All right, second half of the season, the Free Jacks are four and five right now. You take on Toronto at home this weekend. What's the game plan? We have a system. We call it 24 feet and we need to run it. 
and that's all we need to do. We need to run it. We have yet to run it, and a lot of teams that uh, they're they'll be surprised because we have yet to run it, and we're still doing semi decent without running it. And that's just one thing, and that's one thing that we're on pace this week about. We need to run our system, and we need to do it right. We have yet to execute it, and when we do execute it, it executes to perfection. And we have we have film of it, and we we do it in practice all the time. But it's actually executing it in front of fans and in front of another team. But once we do that, we will be humming. Humming, I love that word. How familiar are you with Toronto and their game plan and their style of play? I've seen Toronto; they were good last year. I mean, they're still a force to be reckoned with this year. So they run, a, they pr- run a nice game plan. They're real strategic and real structured. But that's basically what Ryan likes to focus on, and James. We have, we have our little things that we're going to pick at, and our little strategies to get it behind them. But they are a great team, and it's going to be a tough battle this week. I just want everybody to know that to get ready because this Saturday is going to be, it's going to be a fun one. It is going to be a fun one. I'm already excited for it. Okay. It is time for some bonus points. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay. First one, athlete that you would trade places with for a day or celebrity. LeBron LeBron James is living the life of LeBron James. LeBron's a baller. So, I mean, especially since he plays for the Lakers, my hometown, I'm going to go get some shots in at the court, you know, um, I don't know. I just want to, I just want to live, live in the life, see how they live their life, especially as a professional athlete in basketball and then see how it is in rugby. And if you had access to his credit card and bank account, what kind of purchase, what's a one-time purchase you would make on LeBron's credit card? Hmm. I would buy myself a house and I think I'm trying to think it would be somewhere in the keys. I would buy myself somewhere in the keys and I'll put it on LeBron's credit card and he could come kick it with me all the time. Nice and simple. Genius plan. <laughs> Love it. All right. You are a Cali kid playing on the East Coast. So I got to know West Coast or East Coast. West Coast is the best coast, hands down. I'll throw it out there. The West Coast also has the best Mexican food. I have yet to find a good Mexican food place out here. So if anybody that's watching knows about a good West, a Mexican food place out here, hit me up. Let me know. Hit him up. That leads me to my next one, actually. That's perfect. I want to know one food from home that you would bring over to New England. I would say some El Pastor tacos, some marinated pork tacos. I love El Pastor. My mom makes the best one with some Mexican rice. You know, throw some cilantro on it, a little bit of lime. Perfect. Dude, I'm a huge cilantro fan, by the way. I feel like people are very black and white about cilantro. I, I put it on things that it shouldn't be put on. I love it so much. I mean, cilantro could go on anything, to be honest. It's just, it's perfect. It's a perfect little thing. What about a teammate that runs the music in the locker room? We got Joe Johnson and Evan, guys. And it's funny because they're both a little mixture. So Evan loves the heavy metal. Evan Joe is more like a, um, like an EDM, but also knows how to throw it back with the oldies, which I love. I'm a big oldie person. Best of both worlds. Very exactly. nice. Okay, what about a player in the league that you look up to? Player in a league that I look up to, I would say Cam Dolan, uh, number eight for Nola Gold. He came from Life University. He plays for the USA Eagles. Um, so, I mean, he already knows. I, I talk to him a lot. He's a, he's a great player. I, I mean, he's one of the best, I think. So I look up to him, especially playing against him, you know, hit him, hit him from time to time. Probably had one or two penalties on him, but he, like I said, a great player, always looked up to him and was a glory playing against him. An NFL player you would recruit to play rugby? I think Saquon Barkley will kill it. <laughs> will kill it if he played just because he's so big. He's a force to be reckoned with. I'm pre- I'm almost guaranteed that he knows how to tackle. So I think he would be a dog on the rugby field. Okay, my last one for you is... One thing about you I cannot find on the internet that maybe has nothing to do with rugby. I love to read. I'm a big reader. I give, I have a stack of books right here. Um, Yeah, it's, I'm a big reader. I actually lend out a lot of books to my teammates just to try to help them get their reading on. I love to read. That's probably one of my biggest things. Okay. Well, what are you reading right now? What can you recommend to us? So right now I'm actually reading a book that Ryan Martin suggested, which is Mike Tyson, The Untold Story. I don't think I have it somewhere around me. It's in my bag. It's a great book about Mike Tyson growing up and adversity that he faced when he was a child and how he became the greatest athlete he ever was. But the best book that I've ever read, hands down, that changed my life 
Way of the Peaceful Warrior that um, helped set my life on track. And then I just finished another one for athletes called um, Relentless from Good to Great from Great to Unstoppable um, by the person that trained Dwayne Wade, Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant. Amazing book if you're an athlete. You've set me up for the rest of the summer. My reading list is complete. <laughs> Dude, I can't thank you enough. Seriously, you are a rock star. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Have some fun. Go get that dub, but I really appreciate your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.